the Red Bull in the east, that was the rising sun and clear skies were early indications that whether it was late spring or early summer, it was going to be a hot day on the high felt. With cars lining up in the pre-race paddock, crews mingled with off-road racing enthusiasts with an air of tension slowly starting to build. Competitors had their own way of dealing with pre-race nerves and stand around in little groups or sit patiently in cars, waiting for their start time to arrive. After a run of disappointments, Donaldson Prologue winner Alan Smith was in a cheerful mood and was full of confidence and hoping for a good result. It's a good start. Uh, we had a good prologue yesterday. It's the first time we haven't had issues since Cape Town in a prologue. The car went like a dream. Wrong slot at once or twice, but it was a tough route out there. Happy to start out in front. Just slight breeze. I see it's picking up. Let's see what happens. After setting the fastest Donaldson Prologue time among the production vehicles, Team Castrol Toyota Hilux factory driver Anthony Taylor was under no illusions. It was going to be a tough day. It's, I don't think it's going to be as easy as what, it, as what we think it is. You know, this uh, carnival race has always got a sting in the tail. And um, I just hope that I have a clean run. I don't want to get any punches. And, um, you know, hopefully... With all the testing that we've done, it's going to, it's hopefully paid off and uh, hopefully we can bring home a win for the Castrol Toyota team. There was another ceremonial start at Carnival City, but off-road racers like nothing more than to be allowed to show off a little and crews were more than willing to put on a little show for the crowd. As the crews were flagged away from the start line, the only other factor to emerge from the ceremonial proceedings was that out on the route proper, it was going to be a case of dust, 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 and a little more dust. Crews were going to be in for a long and sometimes painful day. From the start opposite the Carnival City Complex, the first section of the route was a repeat of the 57-kilometre Donaldson Prologue run the previous day. In all, competitors would complete two laps of 180 kilometres each. As was expected, Donaldson Prologue winners Colin Matthews and Alan Smith came out with all guns blazing in the Century Racing CR3. The pair knows only one way to race, and that is full-out attack right from the very beginning. It's a high-risk, high-reward approach, but from the spectators' point of views, Matthews and Smith are always spectacular to watch. The early part of the route included high-speed sections where the Century Racing pair built up a head of steam. Sit back and enjoy some dramatic race cam action. With a clear road and no dust ahead of them, Colin Matthews and Alan Smith were enjoying the fruits of winning the previous day's prologue and starting first on the road. It was a massive advantage and behind them the dust was already starting to hang in the air and have an effect on Hermann and Richard Silwald who were second on the road in the Silwald Racing SVR. They were also throwing up huge clouds of dust and behind them special vehicle championship leaders Cully and Quinton Silwald were in pretty much the same situation. The dust and the early morning sun made for difficult conditions and the bad news for crews was that matters were not going to improve throughout the day. After a couple of encouraging results in recent races, Brett Parker and the experienced VZ Van Sale were again among the front runners in the Cisanani Plastics Jimco and looking comfortable. It was easy enough to mark the progress of the race and all one had to do was follow the plumes of dust. Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin also looked comfortable at the front of the production vehicle field in the Team Castrol Toyota Hilux and there were sections on the route where the dust did not play a significant role. These were few and far between and here and there a few muddy patches were also to be found. The versatile Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin started the season with two non-finishers, almost snatched a win on the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, and the Team Castrol Toyota crew needed a good result here to stay in the title race. Former South African champion Evan Hutchinson needed a good result in the Motorite Revo if he was to keep alive his special vehicle championship challenge. Hutchinson trailed the leaders by 30 points with his title hopes dangling on a thread. The event was proving troublesome for navigators and Hutchinson's rookie co-driver Megan Villac was under huge pressure. Brothers David and Gary White were not championship contenders and the only pressure for them was to continue an encouraging run and pick up a good result in the Ruhrcon racing bat. 
They had a few issues with finding the right route, but along with Hutchinson and Villac, picked up a place when they went past the Atlas Copco bat of Johan van Staden and James Rousseau, who were temporarily out of action with the puncture. That moved the White brothers into sixth in the special vehicle category, with Class P graduates again showing they were gaining in confidence in the Class A car. Hannes Kobler and Henny Tristierke were second among the production vehicles in the diesel RFS BMW X3 and after winning the opening event of the season were looking to get back into the winner's circle. The BMW was being chased by championship contenders Thomas Rundle and Juan Moore in the Baden Tire Services Nissan Navara who needed a good result. Steaming along behind the Nissan were Gary Berthold and Andre Vermeulen who were the first of the Toyota privateers to switch to V8 power in the Atlas Copco Hilux. Reigning production vehicle champions Chris Fisser and Jarpi Badenhorst were next up, with a gaggle of SP class entrants being chased by Jimmy Zars and Stefan Kutzier in the Cobalt Racing Liqui Moly Porter. A few kilometers up the track, it was all over for Hannes Krobler and Henny Tersteger with fuel pressure problems all but ending their championship aspirations. Rundle and Moore stormed past the stricken RFS BMW with the Ruhrcon Racing Toyota Hilux of Piki Labaskachny and Rikus Erasmus picking up a place on the road. The Swaziland-based pair of John Thompson and Clinton McNamara started 10th on the road in the Zarco and had picked up a couple of places. They were still running second in Class P to special vehicle frontrunners Colin Matthews and Alan Smith, but it was an encouraging start for the Swazi crew. Chasing after them were Johan van Staden and James Rousseau, who were once again mobile in the Atlas Copco bat and trying to recover lost ground. Also on a charge to make up ground were special vehicle championship leaders Duncan Foss and Rob Howie in the Team Castrol Toyota Hilux. A bad prolonged result saw them start 22nd on the road and they were struggling to find a way past fellow championship contenders Mike Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson in the Regent Racing Nissan Navara. The region racing crew weren't going to make it easy for Foss and Howie to go past, with choking dust as they approached a road crossing adding to the problems facing both crews. The Nissan and the chasing Toyota were both reduced to near walking pace with almost zero visibility as a huge dust cloud enveloped both cars like a giant shroud. Caught up in the fight in the dust were Rubicon Racing pair Loda Brain and Leon Hrelung in the Rubicon Racing Ford Ranger. In among the dust and the confusion, De Brain and Hrelung appeared out of nowhere to shoot across the Toyota's bow with Force and Howie taken completely by surprise. A little further back, the Ford Racing Ranger of teenager Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable was building up ahead of steam. The Peter Maritzburg crew were running ahead of Yanni Fissa and Jorks LaRue, who gave themselves a fright when they nearly high-sided the international Toyota Hilux at a small sprite. Chasing the Northwest crew were Kurbus van Tonda and Freddy Creel in the Unifreight Ford Ranger, who were under some pressure from Class D leaders Louis Weichelt and Francis Bursma in the N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser. Fantunda and Creel missed both the Toyota 1000 Desert Race and the Sun City 400. But ahead of them, there was drama with Marius and Yolinda Ferri, Hugo and Yap de Brain, and Naim Musaji and Rehan Bojana all managing to deposit themselves in a deep ditch running alongside the track. Looming up behind Van Tonder Krill and Louis Weichelt and Francis Burtma was the second N1 4x4 Land Cruiser in the hands of Weichelt's father Cliff and Johann Smallberger. They were coming under pressure from Nick Gosler and Andrew Massey, who were putting in another strong performance in the men's health Zarco, and had moved up the Class P pecking order. Not far behind them was the father and daughter combination of Kutsia and Sandra Labaskachny, who were leading the Class B contingent in the race Sonic Zarco. The ever steady Terence Marsh and George Smallberger were trying to recover from a disappointing Donaldson prologue and were making steady progress in the Regent Racing Nissan Navara when they passed Nardis and Louis Alberts, who had deposited the wraps of that into a deep ditch. Sections of the route were a navigator's nightmare, and Marsh and Smallberger lost time with a little overshoot. It took them a few moments to get their bearings, and then they threaded their way through some thick bush until they were once again on the straight and narrow. 
The Regent Racing crew were not the only team to suffer with a string of other teams later reporting they had run into similar difficulties. Marsh and Smallberger were not the only Regent Racing crew to be struggling. Class P championship leaders Archie Rutherford and Mike Lawrenson were again battling to find a rhythm and were well out of the top three in Class P in the Regent Racing Jimco. Rutherford and Lawrenson were being chased by Class D champions Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer, who were having to push hard after a disappointing prologue in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. Not far behind Fenton and Palmer, the Sizwear Toyota Hilux of classy leaders Dirk Putter and Kurs Klaassens was going along steadily.